uh, we are going to discuss the design of Nyayo House. I, I one time had the architect of Nyayo House claiming that uh, the way he had uh, made the house, some other people came and changed it. That was a lie. My all levels, I studied in Nairobi Technical. And uh, we had technical drawing, which is basic architecture. I do not understand where uh, the rain started beating us. But uh, sometimes Kenyans used to build houses and increase floors. Nowadays you increase even when the, the whole house comes crumbling. If you make an investigation as to how KICC was initially built, they kept on increasing uh, floors. Same with Nyayo House. But we are not talking about increasing floors. We are talking about the, uh, the construction of Initially, the president who first of all thought of constructing Nyayo House was Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. Nairobi used to be a district. The last district commission of Nairobi was called Mr. Bill Martin. He handed over the... Now, he, he, when he was leaving, he was leaving as a DEC. But the person taking over from him was a PC, Simeon Nyachai, Nyandusi. He was taking over as a PC, but taking over from a district commissioner. It was felt that uh, since it was an, a unique district or province, they wanted... Uh, if you look at Nyayo House, there is the P, P, uh, former district commissioner's office, which is a very small thing. So they wanted a building where all departmental heads in the, in the province could stay. That is when they constructed the Nyayo House. Now the construction of Nyayo House, uh, let us concentrate more on the torture chamber. The day when Kenyatta died, Moi took over. Moi became a friend of Ceausescu. And he shared with him about the construction of the provincial headquarters. In Romania, where Ceausescu was, in each and every province, there were provincial torture houses. That is how the element of torture came in because Nyayo House was becoming a uh, provincial headquarters and in Romania every province had a special torture house. Anybody with basic study in architecture will tell you uh, and this is confirmed by when it was apparent that Uhuru was going to lose lose the 2002 elections <laughs> there was an attempt to dismantle the torture the torture chamber but uh, they were advised that the how the torture chamber is so much engraved into the whole architecture that if they continue they dismantled a few things but if they dismantled more it would bring the whole building down so they stopped it that way, and that is why when you visit it, you'll find some uh, pipes and wires and whatever coming out. Now, the construction was done in such a way that um, the lift was from down. We had three types of lifts there. There was the ordinary lifts for people, our visitors. And then there were special lifts for senior people, 
like any other building. We, all buildings have special lifts. And then lastly, there was that one, a very small lift which came from down up. Today I'm going to concentrate on talks about the, uh, the construction of the cells underground. Uh, there was a water logging. There was the changing of uh, temperatures. Uh, the, the, the way you can punish somebody is say, without, okay, when you are taken to Nyaya House, for those who are alive, they should thank God. Because coming out even with physical disability was, uh, the, inter the interrogators, the whatever, those who arrested you, intended that you were to go and die. So if for any reason you lived, even if you came out a person living with physical disability or even mental disability, uh, then you should thank your God. Uh, this, uh, the change of temperature from minus 10 to 40 plus and it was being changed in such a dramatic dramatic way because you can move from a desert to the to the north pole or south pole if you travel let's say at a, after a given time but changing those temperatures within a matter of minutes it really is a torture in itself. The other thing that was there was the piping. Okay, I've talked of piping of water and also changing of temperature. They could, uh, there is this water they pour on you like a horse pipe. Uh, there's a time they pour water on you when the water is freezing cold. And also there was a time they could pour to you when it was really hot, interchangeably. There was also, as a form of torture, piped sound. This piped sound was done deliberately with an intention of playing with their psychology. Yes, we had women who were taken to Nyayo house, but there were very few women. Most of them were men. You go there blindfolded, you don't know what time of the day or night it is there. You stay there hungry, you do what? And in that confused manner, the selection of the sound, the selection of the talk was deliberate. It was deliberate in that it was meant to take you places. Imagine you have been there and you don't know how many days they are there. You don't even know whether it is at night or not. And the cells were placed in the basement deliberately. To, to It was placed in the, 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 the cells were placed deliberately so that you do not know whether it is during day or night. And then suddenly you hear, I mean, it was underground so that Ata Ukili, Ata Ukipiga Nduru, the voice does, is not heard outside. It is not heard outside. And then you, you are, they sent uh, piped uh, voices where you are, piped voices are sent so that you hear a woman walking in high heels or baby crying. These were meant to torture you to break down. Lastly, I want to appeal to any Kenyan. You know those people, I cannot even forestand 5% of the torture that they faced. And if any Kenyan went there and told them that you are a member of Mwakenya or such an organization, 
please forgive him or her. Because whatever they went there, the torture they used to get, they could name anybody. Uh, that is how Nyayo House was constructed.